Thank you. Yesterday, I announced that we would be extending our social distance guidelines through the end of April. This is based on modeling that shows the peak in fatalities will not arrive for another two weeks. The same modeling also shows that by very vigorously following these guidelines, we could save more than one million American lives. Think of that, one million American lives. Today, we reached a historic milestone in our war against the coronavirus. Over one million Americans have now been tested, more than any other country by far, not even close, and tested accurately. We've had a substantial addition to testing uh, with the authorization of point-of-care tests, especially the Abbott point-of-care test, which the President has pulled out of the box. A point-of-care test is a test that gives you a result where you're getting care. This is truly a, uh, a patient-centered approach, whether it's the doctor's office, a hospital, an emergency room, an urgent care center, or a drive-by testing site. Just like tests for flu or strep, where you go to the doctors, you get the test done, you can get an answer within minutes of having this test done. Now, uh, with those tests being approved for Abbott and for others, these are available around the country. They're planning to scale up the number of tests that can be put out throughout the country over the next month, and patients can get the answer within as little as 15 to 5 minutes. And then, of course, an appropriate plan of treatment can be given. The pharmaceutical company Sandoz uh, has been working with us very closely. And as Alex mentioned a little bit, 30 million doses of the hydroxychloroquine to the United States government has been given. And Bayer has donated 1 million doses of the chloroquine, which will soon be distributed to states and state health officials around the country. The FDA has also authorized the Batils, uh N95 respirator mask sterilization kits. It's uh, an incredible thing. And uh, they're going to be able, each machine now, can disinfect 120,000 masks per day. Now, think of that. Each machine can disinfect 100 and 20,000 masks per day. It'll be just like a new one. It could go up to about 20 times for each mask. So each mask can go through this process 20 times. And they have uh, two in Ohio, one in New York, and one will soon be shipped to Seattle, Washington, and also uh, to Washington, D.C. So that's going to make a tremendous difference on the masks. We're sending 60 ambulances to New York City today. We have a total of 60. We're getting some additional ones, with up to 190 more to follow at different locations. Uh, to date, FEMA has obligated more than $1.3 million — billion dollars in federal support to the State of New York. So we're spending a lot of money in New York. It's a hot — it's a hotbed. There's no question about it. In addition to the 8,100 ventilators, that we've already delivered over the next 48 hours. We're delivering more than 1,000. We're going — 400 ventilators are going to Michigan very shortly, 300 going to New Jersey, 150 ventilators to Illinois, 150 to Louisiana, and 50 to Connecticut. FEMA and HHS already delivered 11.6 million N95 respirators, 26 million surgical masks, 5.3 million face shields, 4.4 million surgical gowns, and 22 million gloves. And I don't know if you just saw it, just came over the wires, that Ford just announced just a little while ago that they will produce, along with General Electric Healthcare, 50,000 ventilators, and they're going to be doing it in less than 100 days. And we're also sending things that we don't need to other parts. I just spoke to the Prime Minister of Italy, and we have additional capacity. We have additional product that we don't need. We're going to be sending approximately $100 million worth of — of things, of surgical and medical and hospital things to Italy.
Are you considering it all a nationwide stay at home order? I know there's a lot of states that have put them in place, but some haven't. I'm just wondering if you were considering some sort of broad stay at home order. And then I have a question for Dr. Burks, too, yeah. if you don't mind. Well, we've uh, talked about it. We, uh, you know, there are obviously there are some parts of the of the country that are in far deeper trouble than others. There are other parts that, frankly, are not in trouble at all. So hopefully, hopefully we're going to be able to keep it that way by doing what we're doing. Uh, so we talked about quarantine, as you know. The other day, a group came to me and they wanted to do the quarantine, and I said, let's think about it. And we did, and we studied it. And by the time the evening came, it just was something that was very unwieldy, very tough to enforce, and something we didn't want to do. Can I ask a quick question for Dr. Burks yes. also? Um, so, Dr. Burks, if you don't mind, um, you had mentioned uh, today that this model that predicts 100,000 deaths is if we do things almost perfectly. So I wanted to know, are we currently doing things almost perfectly, or are there more things we need to be doing to cap, you know, to, to not exceed that 100,000, 200,000 model? Please, come. Thank you. I think that's a really great question. Um, and tomorrow we'll go through all of the graphs and all the information that we took to the president for the decision. But when you, and I just want to thank the data team that's working day and night to get, I mean, I usually get my data about 2 a.m. from them, um, and they assimilate all the data from all the states. And when you look at all of the states together, all of them are moving in exactly the same curves. And so that's why we really believe this needs to be federal guidance so that every state understands that it may look like two cases today that become 20, that become 200, that become 2,000. And that's what we're trying to prevent. And I think states still have that opportunity, but they're going to have to do all of these recommended, I mean, these recommendations are recommendations that the globe is using. And so we really do recommend that every governor, every mayor looks very carefully and ensures that their communities are utilizing these guidance. We had warned that this could be seasonal, seasonal cyclical virus. So, and maybe both of you could comment on this and Dr. Burks as well. Are you prepared for this to strike again, say in the fall? All the efforts that are taking place right now to contain this, to be proactive, uh, and yeah. you We're do, prepared. Do. I hope it doesn't happen. Doctor, would you like to say something about that? I hope it doesn't happen, but we're certainly prepared. In fact, I would anticipate that that would actually happen because of the degree of transmissibility. However, if you come back in the fall, it will be a totally different ball game of what happened when we first got hit with it in the beginning of this year. There will be several things that will be different. Our ability to go out and be able to test, identify, isolate, and contact trace will be orders of magnitude better than what it was just a couple of months ago. In addition, we have a number of clinical trials that are looking at a variety of therapeutic interventions. We hope one or more of them will be available. And importantly, as I mentioned to you many times at these briefings, is that we have a vaccine that's on track and multiple other candidates. So I would anticipate that, you know, a year to a year and a half, we'd be able to do it under an emergency use. If we start seeing an efficacy signal, we may be able to even use a vaccine at the next season. So things are going to be very, very different. What we're going through now is going to be more than just lessons learned. It's going to be things that we have available to us that we did not have before. Mr. President, you said several times that the United States has ramped up testing, but the United States is still not testing per capita as many, res as many people as other countries like South Korea. Why is that, and when do you think that that number will be on par with other countries? Yeah, well, and it's, Dr. it's very much on par. The, the, look, per look, well, per capita, we have areas of country that's very hard. I know South Korea better than anybody. It's a very tight. Do you know how many people are in Seoul? Do you, do you know how big the city of Seoul is? 38 million people. That's bigger than anything we have. 38 million people all tightly wound together. We have vast farmlands. We have vast areas where they don't have much of a problem. In some cases, they have no problem whatsoever. We have done more tests. What I didn't, I didn't talk about per capita. We have done more tests by far than any country in the world, by far. 